Hello, in this video I'll be talking about the Faraday's disc. This is what it looks like. It's just a circular disc made of non-ferromagnetic material such as um, aluminium or copper. We then apply a magnetic field perpendicularly into the disc. Next, we spin the disc, perhaps in this direction. So as the disc is spinning, if you connect a voltmeter between the center and the rim of the disc, you'll be able to measure an induced EMF. So how does this work? The easiest way to understand how this works is to imagine that the disc is made out of many 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 wires. So in this diagram, I'm showing the top view. So the magnetic field is going into the screen. So as I mentioned, instead of one solid disc, we can imagine that it's actually made out of many many wires, like the spokes on your bicycle wheel. So when the disc is spinning, it's like all these wires are moving, cutting the magnetic flux, isn't it? Something like this, yeah? Can you see? Every wire as the disc rotates is actually a conductor moving in a magnetic field. So they are cutting the magnetic flux. And as a result, we are going to have an induced EMF. The positive terminal will be at the center of the disc and the entire circumference, the rim of the spinning disc, will be the negative terminal. Can you see why? Ah, it's a bit tough. Huh? Okay, uh, let's stop the spinning. It's getting my head giddy. Okay. So concentrate on this wire here, yeah, this wire. So this wire is moving leftward, right? So this wire is sweeping leftward across the magnetic field, isn't it? So let's use Fleming's right hand rule. Index finger pointing into the screen in the direction of the magnetic field. The thumb has to point leftward because this wire is moving leftward. The middle finger is pointing downward. So between these two ends of the wire, this end is going to be the positive terminal. What about this wire here? For this wire, we've got to point our thumb downward because this as a wire is moving downward. So the middle finger shows that as a wire, this end is going to be the positive terminal and this end is going to be the negative terminal. We can do the same for the wire here. Again, we have an induced EMF that's trying to push current this way. Might as well do one more for this one. Again, you see, the induced EMF is trying to push current this way. So as the disc is spinning, we have a centripetal EMF trying to push current towards the center of the disc. That's why the center of the disc is the positive terminal, while the entire rim is the negative terminal. If you want to tap this EMF, you are going to tap between the center of the disc and any point on the circumference of the disc. And do you realize that the Faraday's disc is actually a DC generator? The EMF doesn't switch direction. If the center is the positive terminal, it will forever be the positive terminal. So you'll be getting a DC current like this. Okay, the challenge now is to derive the formula for the induced EMF. Let's try using the BLV method first. So the induced EMF across this wire is given by BLV. So B is B. R should be the length of the wire. So this length here, which is equal to the radius of the disc. So I'm writing R here. R is the radius of the disc. For the V, I'm going to write V over 2. Do you realize that as a wire, it's not moving like leftward actually, it's actually rotating, right? It's actually rotating. So this end of the wire is actually not moving. Whereas this end of the wire, I would say have a velocity of V. So the leftward velocity of this wire actually increases linearly from zero at the bottom end to V at the top end. That's why I have to do a divide by two here. Because on average, this wire is moving leftward at a velocity of V over two. Ah, the rest is easy already. So V, we can write it as R omega. Because this is the linear speed, this is the angular velocity. You learn V is equal to R omega in the topic of circular motion. As for omega, we can write it as 2 pi frequency. Okay, so the 2 and the 2 can cancel off. Do you see a pi R square here? Pi R square is just the area of the disk. So the induced EMF is, ta-da, equals to buff. If you are following, you may ask this question. So buff is the induced EMF across this wire. But the entire disk actually consists of many, many, many wires, isn't it? So do we have to sum up the EMFs of all these wires? What do you think? The answer is no, we don't have to. You realize that all these wires are connected in parallel. So every wire is like a battery and all these batteries are connected in parallel. So the final induced EMF is still just buff, not many buffers. Now this is quite satisfying, isn't it? But let me show you an even faster method to derive buff. Consider this wire here. As the disc rotates, doesn't it sweep up this area? So this is the amount of magnetic flux cut by this wire. So from Faraday's law, induced EMF is d phi dt. So we can write induced EMF is b pi r squared divided by big T. Do you understand where this comes from? Because this wire is going to sweep up this circular area in one period. Can you imagine this wire after it has rotated one round? 
you swap out one circular area, so one pi r square. So the amount of flux cut during one revolution is b times the circular area. And this is completed in one period. So writing pi r square as b and writing 1 over t as frequency, we get the same formula, buff. Alright, that's all. Ta-ta!